Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jimmy and in today's video, we will take a look at the latest update for Samsung One UI 8 Beta, which this is Beta 4 for the Samsung Galaxy S25 series. Now, I suspect that the full official launch of Samsung One UI 8 with Android 16 will be pushed out within the next three to six weeks. My guess is mid to late August or sometime during September. Now, because the Galaxy Z Flip 7 and the Fold 7 is already released, with Samsung One UI 8 out of box, that just means that we are almost there again with this one being at beta 4. So we'll just take a look to see what is new with this update. We'll take a look at a few applications and services just to see if there's any differences or updates there. We'll also take a look at the Samsung mobile security page because I want to see everything that is written there as well. What I'm looking for here is the Samsung members application because if you do want to join any type of beta program and if there is one available for your phone, you go inside of the Samsung members application. Then from here, you just look around and you try to find the area where it says beta program. Now, because I'm a part of a beta program, it put it towards the top. If you're not a part of any type of beta program, it may be towards somewhere along the bottom. You just tap in this section here and it's gonna let you know what you're able to join up or, or what you are a part of. So here is the One UI 8 for Samsung Galaxy S25 devices. It says here the fourth beta software update. It's just sitting right here. And then here is all of the stuff. It's the exact same stuff that's written on this page here. So some of the bugs that have been fixed, they added an emergency update feature for Samsung IMS service. Uh, a pop-up or notification may appear to request user consent for IMS service update and restart. Now IMS, what that really is for is that is for some of the rich things, like so the uh, the Wi-Fi calling, the voice over LTE, uh, RCS for messaging and video calling. So they have a few updates uh, surrounding all of those things. Also, it supports the full screen switching while playing videos when using DeX. They fixed the operation error of the Galaxy AI reply suggestions. They also improved the loading issue when Bixby routine commands are triggered via voice. They improved the display issue in the quick launch icon area on the lock screen. They fixed an editing error with iNavi dash cam videos in the gallery app. They fixed an issue where the message fingerprint sensor not responding appeared on the lock screen, which I did actually run into that a few times. They fixed outgoing call failure when attempting swipe call from the contact list when talkback was enabled. They improved flickering issue of the central vertical horizontal level gauge when switching from front to rear camera and then software stability and enhanced uh, throughout updates to several applications. Now down over here, you can see that this one is for, you know, One UI 8, Android 16, version ends with ZYGB. Uh, the size is almost 1.3 gigs. So this thing is uh, 1,265 megabytes with that July 1st security patch, which is why we'll take a look at everything on the back end of things for the month of July of what was updated from Samsung and Google. So let's just restart this thing now. And as at this point in the video, I like to state if you're brand new here at the channel, Jimmy is promo. You appreciate these tips, tricks, tutorials, and the latest information on your Samsung Galaxy devices. Make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell for notifications so you get notified for all future videos. Now the update is done and complete. Let's just go for the information on the back end of everything from Samsung and Google, because really this is where a lot of the meat and potatoes is for this update. So this is all of the vulnerabilities and fixes that have been fixed. So on the very top, this is everything from Google. So you will have one that is critical, and then you also have 21 that is high. Uh, none of them are moderate. As you scroll on down, these are everything for Samsung stuff. Now there is one for the Samsung Semiconductor. So there is a patch that's been updated. It's a high one right there. So in, in terms of the Samsung Semiconductor, it is linked up with one of these Google updates. Now down over here, this is where you're able to find a lot of the information from Samsung. So Samsung Mobile provided 18 Samsung vulnerabilities and exposures in the items below. Now, even though it mentions that there's 18, only nine of them are written below. So a few of them, we don't exactly know what they have fixed, but it looks like there's a few things from Knox. You have another one from the Galaxy Watch. If I remember right, several of these are actually from Galaxy Watch. So a lot of the stuff with the framework of the Galaxy Watch, the Bluetooth connection with the Galaxy Watch, your Samsung account with it, another one for Wi-Fi passwords for the Galaxy tablet. Uh, let's see, another one for improper privilege management in Bluetooth. And you can read a little bit of details down over here if you want to get a little bit more 
information than what it's stated from above. Another one with the low energy audio service. So again, that's with Bluetooth and such. Another one right there. So a couple improper accesses. And then another one for uh, insecure storage of sensitive information in emergency SOS. So that one sounds pretty important right there. So this was everything on the back end of things that you can't really see, but it was fixed again from Google and Samsung. Now let's take a look at a few applications and services just to see if there is any newer version. So I took a look at Samsung Home before the update. Uh, Samsung Home was sitting at 17.000139. This one is now 17.0033. So there is a newer version of Samsung One UI Home. And one of those could be dealing with whatever problems could be on this home screen. And it can also flutter over into your fingerprint reader as well, since it is on the display. Now we'll also take a look at camera. Take a look at camera here before the update. This one was sitting at 16.0033. This one is 16.0.0.0.4.6. So you do have a newer version of camera. And then we'll take a look at gallery. And I will mention this because there's a lot of updates already being found just by looking at some of the main applications on the Samsung phone, especially with this one being beta four. I almost guarantee if we do see beta five and or six, I don't think that we'll see a bunch of newer versions unless if there's a bunch of issues because they're doing a bunch of updates with this one here of beta four, that is letting me know that they're nearing the end of it because it's getting to the end versions of these applications with inside of beta. Now, when it comes down over into the gallery, it was 15.7.0037. This is 15.7.0039. So again, a newer version of gallery. Now we'll take a look at the lock screen, which this is the last one that I have written down. I didn't really want to go through everything on this phone. When it comes down to the lock screen before the update was 8, 9, 10, 13. This is 8, 9, 10, 31. So with this update information right over here, again, letting us know that they had an update because of the fingerprint reader. So down over here, it mentions something about the fingerprint sensor not responding. That is why we had the updated version of lock screen as well as Samsung One UI Home. Now, the last place I want to take a look at is the Samsung Galaxy Store. Even though a bunch of Samsung applications and services updated with this update, sometimes they have to put in, if there's other applications that is being updated with this one, they will put it inside of here, inside of updates. Because sometimes you have to manually press on the update option. There's a few applications that they just can't do it automatically all the time. So I don't see anything with this one here. Before the update, I did up update four applications that was sitting inside the store. Uh, but other than that, nothing came with this update that we had to manually press. But that is everything that I wanted to take a look at in today's video. I also looked online to see if anybody else found anything that was, you know, noteworthy that we had to take a look at. I'm not really seeing any orange dots anywhere when it comes down to this phone either. Uh, so sometimes the orange dots lets you know that there is something that is brand new or updated that it's given you uh, attention like, hey, you should look at this. This is something new or updated. So with all of the applications being updated that we have looked at today, which was the home, the gallery, the camera, the lock screen. So it's telling me that they are nearing the end of this update. Everything else will probably just be bug fixes, not really newer versions of applications since we are getting closer. Again, it's July 31st. I think we'll see this update being pushed out officially uh, probably within the next three to six weeks. That's just my guess. But hopefully you guys have appreciated this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Subscribe on the very bottom left-hand side. And if you like this video, then more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.